everyone. I am Madeline Cantillier, your presenter for today. So this is the continuation of the report of Ma'am Che Kalapaan. And the topic that I'm going to present to you is roles in locating Delta and Core. So the Delta and Core is important in fingerprint analysis. So before the ridge tracing, the ridge counting, the fingerprint expert or the examiner first locate the Delta and the Core. So let us define delta. So when we say delta, it is the point on a friction ridge at or nearest to the point of divergence of two tight lines. The delta area is located as a triangular area where the ridges radiate outward in three directions or a place where two lines run side by side and then diverge to form a triangle. So we have various forms of deltas. We have a dot, bifurcation, ending ridge, meeting of two ridges, point of the first recurving ridge, opening of the bifurcation, and last is the ending ridge at the point of divergence. So here are the examples of deltas, which is a dot, bifurcation, recurving ridge, meeting of two ridges, short ridge and ending ridge so let's proceed on the rules on locating delta rule one in given figure the mark delta is considered as the delta because it is the first ridge or part of a ridge nearest the point of divergence of the tight lines so as we can see in the figure we have ridge and a dot and two tight lines a dot is considered as delta because the dot is the first ridge nearest to the point of the divergence. Rule 2. The delta may not be located at a bifurcation which does not open towards the core. So in this figure, we can see the location of the core and three bifurcations. So according to the rule, a bifurcation that is close, that is the location of the delta three when there is a choice between a bifurcations and another type of delta equally close to the point of divergence the bifurcation is selected so in this figure we have two deltas which is a bifurcations and a dot so according to this rule we have to choose a bifurcations as our delta Rule 4. When there is a series of bifurcations opening towards the core at the point of divergence of the two type lines, the bifurcation nearest to the core is chosen. So in this figure, we have B and C as our type lines and we have two bifurcations. So according to this rule, we have to choose our delta in the bifurcation that is nearest to the core. So rule 5, the delta may not be located in the middle of the ridge running between the type lines toward the core, but at the nearer end only. So in this figure, we have the type lines, the core, and the short ridge. According to this rule, the delta is located nearer to the nearer end towards the type lines and near the point of divergence. 6. If the ridge enters the pattern area below the divergence of the type lines, the delta must be located at the nearer to the core. So in this figure, we have a type lines, a ridge that enter the pattern area and the point of divergence. But unlike the rule 5, the delta is located at the end nearer to the core. Not like the rule number 5. The delta is located towards of the type line. So letter D is our chosen delta. So let's proceed to core. So when we say core, it is placed upon or within the innermost sufficient recurve. And it is a point on the ridge formations usually located at the center or heart of a pattern. Last, it is defined as the innermost turning point where the fingerprint 
ridges form a loop. So, rules in locating core. First, or rule one, the core is placed upon or within the innermost sufficient recurve. So, in this figure, we have three sufficient recurve. So, under this rule, we will have, we will choose our core that is placed on the innermost sufficient recurve. Rule two. When the innermost sufficient recurve contains an uneven number or the odds of roads rising as high as the shoulders, the core is placed on at the end of the center rod, whether it touches the looping ridge, ridge or not. So in this figure, we have two examples. The first one has three rods. The core is placed at the end of the center rod. And the other one, example, we have five rods. So we will choose our core, our core at the end of the center rod. So this rule is for odd number of rods. But rule three, if the innermost sufficient recurve contains an uneven number of rods rising as high as the shoulder, the core is placed upon the two center rods being treated as though they were connected by a recurving ridge. So this rule is for even number of rods. So in rule number two, is for odd number of rods. So first, first one, so in example one, we have two rods. So, to locate our core, we will draw imaginary recurve that connecting the two rods. So, go back to the rule 1. The core is located in the innermost sufficient recurve. So, in this figure number 2, we have four rods. So, we will treat, we will treat as rod 1 is connected to rod 4 and the rod 2 is connected to rod 3 so back to the rule number one the location of the core is in the innermost sufficient recurve rule four when there are two rods in center the one that has the higher shoulder line the upper point of that ridge is considered as a point core so in this figure we have two Rods. So, we have A and B. So un under this rule, at the upper point of higher shoulder line where the core is located. Thank you and stay safe.